welcome back to another Star Mini Gaming YouTube video. Uh, this is a video response to Vince's topic of the week on the golden age of wargaming. And now in Vince's initial video, he makes the um, statement that he believes that right now is the golden age of wargaming, and he defines this as more options in terms of games to play, better quality of models, uh, greater um, availability of places and opponents to play, um, these war games, um, more access to other war gamers via the internet um, and other means, and a greater amount of content um, available in things like YouTube and Facebook and Google Plus and other such places uh, to allow us to connect more and interact more within our hobby than ever before. And um, right out of the gate I want to say that I agree with him. Um, I, I think that 100% now is in many ways from that kind of grand scale, that grand view, the greatest time ever for our hobby, right, to take part in it. Um, but I do kind of want to take a page out of Hooves of Doom's book and go a little bit historical on you here and talk about a few of the games that I believe were key, um, or may have been key. Uh, in getting us to where we are at today. Um, now these games are not necessarily going to be like groundbreaking in the sense that you know providing things that were never done before but uh, many of them I believe you can directly see the effects of um, of their popularity and what they brought to the table and made popular um, in modern day games. And so the first one I want to start with is the Star Wars Miniatures game. Uh, this and actually I believe all the games that I'll be talking about today you've probably heard me mention before in various other videos that I've either made myself or taken part in. Um, these are all games that I've played and um, have a pretty fair amount of experience with and and so um, it's you know in part for those reasons uh, and knowing the system so well that when I see modern systems and I see things that I do believe were inspired by or borrowed from these older systems, uh, that's why I chose these. So like I said, the first one is the Star Wars Miniatures game. This was a uh, grid-based system. Uh, here's a picture of some of the models um, from one of the booster sets. I believe this one was um, called Night Sealed Republic. We have a few that you might recognize if you played the old games, such as Darth Nihilus, um, Darth Malak, Darth Bane, uh, Exar Kun, there's Mace Windu. Obviously these models were not the greatest of quality, you know, like most of Wizards of the Coast products that you'll see even today. Uh, the quality of sculpts are not amazing. Um, to be fair, this picture is a little bit blurry, and most of the characters were easily identifiable. As, you know, there's Vader, it's pretty obvious. There's the Republic Commando group from the video game, Qui-Gon Jinn, etc. Uh, here's what the board looked like, and um, this is an abnormally large force. Uh, you know, I, I play quite frequently. I had a group of friends that um, play consistently with me, and uh, we very seldom would have this many troops on one side um, of any battle. But um, that being said, you know, this was a was a grid-based system. Uh, it was initially just land battles, as you can see here. Uh, there were various things like turrets and such that came out as the game developed. But it did not stop there. It later uh, grew and expanded to include a space battles version. As you can see here, several different capital ships, and then in the background you have smaller ships like fighters and bombers and smaller frigates and shuttles over there. And now Obviously, as you can tell from this picture, these were not to scale, um, and this was also played on a grid-based system, as you can see here. Um, you know, cl quite clearly, a Y-wing, as you as as pictured down here, is not that close to the same size as a massive Mon Calamari cruiser. Um, but the point of the game, you know, wasn't necessarily the scale, uh, but more of the interaction of fighters and bombers against each other, and capital ships in combat. Now, you know, the game wasn't overly complex uh, in either of its um, versions, whether it be the ground or space battles. Um, both were D20 based systems. You had your basic, you know, attack and defense uh, stats, um, your damage stats, things like that. It was all, you know, very fundamentally simple, but it was, without a doubt, the, in many ways, the precursor to X Wing Armada and Imperial Assault. 
Um, X-Wing obviously being the fighter based or fighter level based game, Armada being more of a fleet based game similar to this Space Battles version of the Star Wars Miniatures game, and Imperial Assault being similar to the uh, original Star Wars Miniatures game. Now, um, part of the reason that we can draw you know, this conclusion is that these new games of X-Wing, Armada, and Imperial Assault came out almost immediately after Wizards opted to not renew the license for their games. Um, the games do play differently, uh, but there are definite similarities between the two that, if you've even played a single game of each, are quite obvious to pick up. Um, <laughs> this is not an accusation against uh, Fantasy Flight or any of the other companies that I talk about. Um, there's nothing wrong with borrowing good aspects or being inspired by good aspects from other games in creating your own. Uh, and in many ways I do believe that X-Wing took a lot of the best things from the Space Battles game and improved upon them quite a bit. The next game that I wanted to talk about was uh, the Lord of the Rings game, which is not completely dead, but compared to what it was in its golden age, uh, it's dead comparatively. You know, it's on its last legs compared to that. That's not to say that the game is going to completely die. Uh, I know, for example, in the UK and other parts of Europe, it still has a thriving community. And in a few areas of the US, <coughs> such as Washington, DC, there are respectable sized communities that still play quite frequently. However, uh, unfortunately for myself, in the great state of Texas, it is all but dead. There is very, very, very little left, and as far as I know, uh, my local gaming group was the last group of any significant size that played this game. Um, there were about eight of us, and uh, slowly even that group died down. Now this uh, this is a picture, of course, of the original rule book that came out when the Fellowship of the Ring movie came out. The second one, again with the two towers. The third one with Return of the King. Um, and we're now in what is in essence our fifth edition of the uh, strategy battle game, which is now which was um, with that rule book labeled the Hobbit strategy battle game. Now, um, this game was GW's first large-scale skirmish game. Um, you know, individual models, you're not moving in squads. Um, so, you know, in that way it's different from their modern Age of Sigmar. Uh, the size of battles that you played was similar. Uh, you played r pretty close to the same amount of models in your standard uh, Lord of the Rings SPG game as you do in Age of Sigmar. Um, and it was one of those games that played quite well. Uh, in a good range. In terms of like the rules didn't break, it just meant that the amount of time that you spent in the game increased as you up the size, much like in Age of Sigmar. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of uh, obvious similarities, and if you put the two rule books side by side, you can definitely see um, where GW used their experience with SBG to help them uh, write the rules for Age of Sigmar. Uh, also, obviously in Age of Sigmar you can see influences from classic fantasy and from 40k as well. Um, but Lord of the Rings I think perhaps is the one that uh, it borrows from the most strongly. Uh, here's just a picture of some of the Hobbit models um, from the barrels out of Bond set. The third game I want to talk about, and this one may be the greatest stretch in terms of what I want to talk about in terms of uh, the game that I do believe that it directly inspired today. Now I don't want to say that it's quite as strong as the other two um, that I've mentioned. It, uh, you know, I don't believe that the game that I see correlations to today um, draws as much directly from it, but there is definite similarities in how they played. And that is MechWarrior Dark Age, um, which was rebranded Age of Destruction with the starter box that you can see here. <laughs> it was a click-based game similar to um, Hero Clicks, but it was an open map style of play similar to games like Age of Sigmar and 40k and Warm of Hordes, which I do believe is the one that um, is most similar to. And perhaps some aspects of this game were uh, drawn to Warm of Hordes. There's definitely some similarities, um, but again, you know, there, it's not an extremely close one, and I'm not trying to say that 
this was the direct predecessor, but there are elements of the game that I do believe, um, because of its initial popularity, perhaps inspired aspects of Warm of Words today. It, um, the terrain system and how terrain interacted with you is similar, not exactly the same. Um, you know, some of the squad rules uh, are similar, but you know, it's not, like I'm saying, it's not an exact match. Um, one of the things, though, that I do think that Age of Destruction and Dark Age really contributed to um, that we're finally beginning to see a little bit more of from some of the other companies like GW um, is a prevalence of female characters in the game that are not um, helpless. In this game, you know, if you're familiar at all with the MechWarrior Battletech universe, you know that they're basically giant robots um, that are part of their militaries in addition to tanks, infantry, and other things, and of course the mechs are the star of the show. And <laughs> this particular female that you see here is uh, Anastasia Kerensky, and um, anyone who played the game significantly, especially near kind of the end of the game's life, will tell you that when you saw this particular pilot paired with this particular mech uh, across the table from you, you were probably cursing. Um, I played the Wolf Hunters faction, which is what this mech and this pilot is from, and she had a unique ability to attack three times in a single turn um, if there were enemies within range, dealing out perhaps an unequaled amount of damage uh, and destruction to your opponent in a single turn. There were upgrades you could give her to make her even more effective in this. Um, but the point is that this was one of the first games um, that had significant popularity in terms of the wargaming aspect that had female characters that were common, uh, you know, there was quite a few of them, and were not overly sexualized, and were not helpless. Um, this is one of the first games that you see strong female characters in the fluff and in gameplay itself that... Uh, were actually worthy characters of having been in the game at all. Um, and then finally, we come to the big daddy of them all in terms of um, that, you know, the decline of this game may have been one of the leading factors in producing the golden age as we see it today. Again, based upon the definition that Vince is talking about and that I'm also espousing of. Greatest uh, amount of variety of games, ease of um, finding opponents and joining in community and all, and that is of course the classic Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, I do have the least amount of experience with this game of all of these games that I've mentioned. I played only a handful of games, and a couple of those was were in the Lord of the Rings equivalent of this game that basically took the rule set of this and used Lord of the Rings models for it. Um, but Warhammer Fantasy was a mass battles game, as most, if not all of you know, uh, that took place in what is called the Old World, and in many ways shaped three different widely popular games that we see today. <coughs> in Age of Sigmar, the Ninth Age, and Kings of War. Kings of War being, um, and Ninth Age both being quite similar, uh, and quite obviously having their roots in this game in terms of how they play uh, and the armies that are now found within them. And Age of Sigmar, uh, from a narrative perspective and um, perspective of introduction of characters, the most directly linked to this game, uh, obviously as it is you know, the one currently being produced by GW. But um, as sad as it is you know, for so many people to have lost a game that they love so dearly and Certainly, um, in terms of, it's still playable. I mean, there's the rules are still out there, but in terms of being supported by the company and continuing to grow and continuing to um, have new releases, uh, obviously that has ended. But on the positive note, it has led to, like I said, three different games, which is perhaps unprecedented in terms of the offspring from one single system to be widely popular um, all at the same time. And so here we have uh, a few pictures of um, games that I do believe were, well, number one, that are widely popular today, that are part of this modern golden age of wargaming that we see today, and that I do believe were in large part inspired or influenced by 
um, not just the games that I mentioned here, but you know several others that have come and gone, um, and really led about in many ways this golden age that we have today. Uh, you know, obviously not every game is well, no game will be around forever, and not every game, you know, can last as long as a Warhammer Fantasy or a 40k of roughly 30 years. Um, but you know, each of these games that I've mentioned, and of course several others that I haven't, uh, definitely have brought a positive impact, have been opportunities for the wargaming community to grow and evolve over time, and in my opinion, uh, it's games such as these that ha are directly responsible um, for the great games that we see today, number one, and number two, for the growth of such a positive um, community that we have today in games such as Age of Sigmar and the availability um, to really be in contact with such a positive and um, strong, com vibrant communities that we have in tabletop wargaming. Uh, but until, that's going to be it for this video, um, but until next time, this is James and happy